Good morning, my name is Carlton Roy, and today we're here to discuss pump starvation in a high pressure reciprocating pump and the ca uh, cavitation within the pump that that can lead to. And we're also going to discuss the triangle pump components cavitation package of valves that can help in reducing the uh, poor flow situation of starvation. Here you see a cutaway of the fluid end expendables. That would be the plunger, the packing, the brass, the stuffing box. And here would be the suction valve and the discharge valve. And this area right here would be the plunger chamber. Here is an animated view of the same thing. And you can basically see how a reciprocating pump works. Um, moving back and forth in a reciprocating type action. And you can see the suction valve and the discharge valve work opposite each other as the plunger comes forward or backward. Backward would be the inlet stroke and opens the suction valve. Forward would be the discharge stroke where it compresses the fluid in the plunger chamber and drives the fluid out under pressure through the discharge valve. Things that can cause starvation within a reset pump. Number one place to start looking would be at the level of the fluid in the tanks, the feed tanks themselves. If the level is too low, then there's not enough head in the tank to charge the pump appropriately. Piping. If there's any one of several things wrong with the piping, this could also have the same effect. If the pipe from the tank to the pump is too long, or too many 90 degree turns in it, or is too small or too large, any one of those things could cause the pump to not be getting enough fluid into it. The feed pump itself, uh, the ideal pump system would have a charge pump along with it. Uh, this would be a centrifugal type pump that would push the water along from the tank into the high pressure reset pump. And many times you see that centrifugal pump not be in good maintenance service and so therefore it may not be able to feed the reset pump like it normally would. Pulsation dampener would ideally be installed in the system as well. Pulsation dampener, all it does basically is hold a, uh, an amount of water in position ready for that suction valve when it calls for more fluid. If that pulsation dampener is not in a good state of repair or charged, then it may not be holding that fluid there ready to go. So that needs to be checked as well. Another and fifth reason why you may see some starvation inside the pump itself is that one of these four uh, first problems may be not able to supply the pump if the springing of the suction valve is too strong. And we see this quite often in situations where they come out with an OEM pump that has the same size spring on both the suction and the discharge and uh, what you can do to alleviate this situation is to put a more lightly sprung valve on the inlet side of the pump. That in turn will allow the uh, plunger chamber to be fed appropriately. <clears throat> Results of starvation? Cavitation. That's the number one thing. But the pump becomes grumpy much the same way I do when my wife puts me on a diet. My stomach begins to growl and I get irritable. So she quickly takes me off that diet and we go down to Dairy Queen for a blizzard. <clears throat> that always worked perfect on me. Not quite that easy to solve on a reset pump. <clears throat> but you'll notice that something's wrong with the pump because the discharge side of the pump will begin to fail. You're not putting out the same amount of fluid that the pump was designed to do. And you'll see this, you'll notice this first of all in the discharge gauge because that needle 
will be fluctuating rapidly back and forth. <clears throat> Resolution. Of course, the main thing that you can do to solve this situation is to correct that piping situation uh, or the centrifugal feed pump or to install a feed pump or to put on a pulsation damper. If you can't do any of those, either because uh, the economics of it or you don't have time, a simple solution and partial fix would be to install uh, what we call the TPCI uh, cavitation package. And this would consist of the as we discussed a while ago, the lightly sprung valve that would open more quickly. This particular valve is called the V7H. Uh, it's a metal valve, uh, 316 stainless on the seat and on the disc predominantly. And with that light spring, and it's a low lift valve. So the valve will crack, the spring will, at a half pound PSI and be fully open at one pound. And so that means that all of a sudden you're able to get as much fluid coming into that plunger chamber as possible. So now, in theory, the plunger chamber is full, but because the plunger is still coming forward as it was designed to do at 300 RPMs, depending on the size, how much volume you're getting out of the pump now, then you still need a more heavily sprung valve on the discharge side of the pump. And that's where the Durable Style V7F comes in because as you can see, the spring is quite a bit uh, larger and it sits on the outside edge of the valve. But the spring will collapse all the way up to the retainer. So it's a high lift valve as well, thus allowing as much fluid as the pump is designed to push out, uh, allowing as much fluid as possible to leave the pump under that kind of pressure. So what we would have is on the suction side of the pump, we would have the V7H. On the discharge side of the pump, we would have the V7F, which would be the higher lift valve. So you get as much fluid in with the V7H as possible. You get as much fluid out with the V7F as possible. The third way to solve these problems is to go back and fix the issue with the piping system with the pump or with the pulsation damper. Thank you.